Well, hello everyone. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to another edition of Fast and Fun Projects with Noreen. I am Noreen Smith, Product Development Creative Manager here at Creative Memories. And it's my pleasure each and every Wednesday to get together with you and kind of give you some ideas for creating fast and fun layouts, fast and fun projects, fast and fun albums, and even just giving you tips to make your scrapbooking faster and more fun. So welcome if this is the first time we've met. I'm so glad you're here. Of course, we've got folks watching on Facebook in the Creative Memories Virtual Crop Facebook group and on the Creative Memories YouTube channel. So whichever platform you're watching on, make sure you go to the opposite platform and like and follow on Facebook and like and subscribe on YouTube. And when you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that little bell so that you'll get notifications every time I go live or every time we upload a new video. So it's all good. You don't want to miss anything. Now I should start off today by saying that I am not live with you today. This is a pre-recorded episode of Fast and Fun Projects with Noreen because I'm traveling. Uh, as you are watching this on our regular or in our regular time frame, Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Central Time, I will actually be at Creative Memories home office. So watch the um, Creative Memories Facebook virtual crop group to see if there's any other little photos or uh, perhaps a little live video that I might share over the next few days with you. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's my first trip to home office. I get to meet with a lot of people that I've been working virtually with for the last several months, as well as some of the dream team advisors. These are creative memories advisors who earned a trip to home office, and we're going to be able to have some meetings with them, and it's going to be a great, great uh, time of working and brainstorming and thinking. So lots of good stuff, I'm sure, will come from that. All right, so today we are going to get our inner zen on. We are going to become very serene. You know, we're going to take our fun scrapbooking hobby and we are going to make it easy and serene and very peaceful. So if that doesn't give you a hint, we are going to be working with the Serenity Collection, the new line that was just launched uh, a week or so ago, mid-January, that is all about self-care, uh, calming, peacefulness, serenity, as the name suggests. And you're going to see that it's a beautiful collection of blues and greens and pale purples and neutral tones, and it's going to work with a lot of different things. But we're going to be focusing on the Serenity Fast to Fab inspired pages or papers. So if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we spent a good amount of time talking about at that fresh focus on Fast to Fab. So I'm going to give you my take on why I love using the Fast to Fab inspired papers even just a little bit more than I enjoy using the Fast to Fab refill pages. So let me switch you over to my desk to show you what I've got going on. So I've got some of the components of the Serenity collection here, the paper pack, some of the laser cut borders, stickers, and the variety map cards. And of course, I love to use all of those. But I'm going to show you how you can, again, just take these designer papers, Fast to Fab inspired designer papers, quickly get some photos on them, but then also maybe add a little bit at, if you want to play and make, um, you know, just that little bit extra on your layouts. Let's have a quick look at each of these uh, papers and then I'll tell you why I love them so much. All right, so our first sort of spread uh, has these lovely sort of corner designs on them. And the reason, well, one of the reasons that I really love the papers is you can turn them and you can really mix and match them. So maybe I want both of the corners up at the top. Maybe I want them both down at the bottom. One up, one down, the opposite way. Maybe somehow I want them, you know, both in that corner for some reason. Whatever way you want to work with them, you can because there's no jeeping on them. There's no uh, edges. 
that you have to, you know, be concerned how they fit into your album. These are going to work like any other paper. Now, I know that some of you are going to say, well, what about the back side? So on the back side, we have a different design. And again, it can be, you know, moved and changed however you want. And that's really one of the big benefits of having the fast to fab designer papers instead of the fast to fab refill pages. So you get two of each of them. So, so if you really love the purple, for example, you can actually flip over the other two papers and you can have two purple layouts. So I hope that makes sense. So let me just show you, for example, if I really loved this one, I could go find the other set of these papers as I'm going through. There we go. And I could have two full pages done with those particular papers. So you get a little bit more choice and you get a little bit more flexibility. Now, for those of you who scrapbook directly onto album refill pages, of course, you can wallpaper meaning you can attach these papers to your refill pages. Um, or if you like to scrapbook in the pockets, you can just slide these right into the pocket pages. You don't need to attach them to an album page. Now, if you put them into a pocket page, of course, you could use the back side as well. So again, a lot of flexibility. Now you can also cut these up. So say for example, I wanted to make this kind of layout. I like these background pages, but I really like this little design. So maybe I'm going to cut out a diagonal with this design from this paper and attach it up at the top here. So don't think of them just as background pages. You can certainly use them for other things. Let's look at a couple of other ones that might make a little bit more sense. So here's a spread where the borders are on the side. Again, they could be both down at the bottom. They could be both towards the inside of the layout, both at the top or any combination, right? You can do whatever you like with these. But say for example, you really liked this particular border and you want to use that on another page. Perhaps you have one of the Serenity Designer papers that you're gonna use as your background page, but you really like this border. And so maybe you're going to trim that down and attach that to another page. So then your page might look like that. So again, even though they are pre-printed, and they make for the quickest layouts imaginable, don't forget that you could certainly cut out some of these elements. If you really liked the background paper, for example, this really uh, nice sort of tonal beige stripe, I hope you can see that little bit of a stripe, I might cut out these borders to use again on a different page, and then I would have this as a piece of paper that I could use for matting my photos or making a different kind of border, etc. So that's a, a, a couple of reasons really why I love these papers so much. They are more versatile, they can be cut up, they can be rearranged in so many different ways, and just sort of like I have here, you can combine them in different combinations as well. So for example, with my photos that are very outdoor focused, you know, I might like some of the blue but because I have a lot of greenery there, maybe I want to make a blue and green page. So perhaps I'm gonna do something like this, and then as I place my photos down here, that green is going to really, you know, be picked up. Now, if I did something like this, one of the things I might want to do is take a paper, a coordinating paper from the same uh, line, in this case, the Serenity Designer Paper Pack, and maybe I want to pull out one, uh, a little bit more green. I'm just looking to see, I think, yeah, here is a kind of a lighter green. that's very similar here. I could add a little bit of green over onto this page just to, just to bring the green over. And then I could add a little bit of blue. Let's see. 
maybe this one, over onto this page. So even if I just added a strip of blue over here and a strip of green over here, then I'm making the whole layout really feel intentional. So I started with two different papers, not a double page spread, but just by adding some other strips, I can really create sort of a custom colored, uh, customized background. So again, really, really love the, um, the fast to fab papers for that ability. Now, of course, if you're using fast to fab pages, you can definitely add additional papers or even borders, etc., to them. But let's, let's not kind of go too far here. I'm going to come back to my photos in a minute. But let's look at some of the other pages that we have here. I kind of got myself all mixed up. Okay, so we were looking at these ones. We already looked at the, the ones with the corners. We looked at the green. Let's just take a look at the blue. Here's the other one. So again, two beautiful blue pages. I love the stripes going across like that but very easily I can mix and match. That's really pretty. The border could go across the bottom, one at the bottom, one at the top. You get the idea. We're starting to see how versatile these really are. Then we've got that lovely sort of pale mauve, kind of a neutral purple. Again, nice big stretch of, of uh, space to add your photos. You can add any style of photos there. And again, lots of variations. That's kind of neat too, so that you have sort of these two columns of photos. Same with the last set, the beige. I really like the border on this one, kind of that picket fence sort of style of border. And again, moving it around so that you can use it in whatever way works best for you. So I've put aside most of the pages because I think these are probably the pages that I'm leaning towards for working with my um, with the photos that I showed you a little bit earlier. So let's just have a quick play around to see what my options would be. And again, this would be the fastest way to get some photos onto your pages and into your albums. So I happen to have, I know from when I was printing these, I've got three photos that are landscape, three photos that are uh, vertical or portrait. So perhaps I'm going to start by maybe putting a couple of the photos like that. One of the things I always like to do is keep my margins or the edges of my photos very even. And that way it gives me a very uh, easy on the eyes type of design. So I'm not loving this little section in here. So perhaps I'm going to bring these down and I'm going to pop that one in there. So that's okay. Uh, let's just turn this around and see if we can do a little bit of a different arrangement. Maybe all of these are going to go down here at the bottom so that we've got a nice line there. That's a little bit more, a little bit more symmetrical. I like that orientation. I would probably put my journaling in here and some kind of title there. But I feel like there's a lot of um, blank space. And even though I've got the blues and the greens, it's really not making my photos really pop. So I think this is not the layout for me. But wow, that was that would have been a fast layout to put together. I think I'm gravitating towards the blue. And as I mentioned, I've got blue and green. So I kind of think that I might be adding a little bit of green here or maybe some neutral colors. Now I'm just going to push these together so that I can see that I've got this fun sort of design going through my layout and kind of breaking it up. And I like the way that that creates some different spaces for my photos. So let me just play around a little bit here. Maybe I'm going to put these two on this side with that beautiful mountain view there. And then these two over here. And I like the way that that is working already because of a couple of things. I like the way that my photos fit onto the pages when I have them turned. 
I like the way that my borders of my photos, and I just printed these with a, a, a white border around them. I like the way that those borders are kind of mimicking this line uh, that separates the border area from the, the field. So I really like that. And I also like that I can use the lines printed on the paper to really make my photos nice and even. That's a super easy way to get my photos equally spaced, keep the margins nice and equal. Uh, I really like that look. So I like that. I think that that looks really good. And I'm just going to bring in a green here. And again, there's some green in my photos, so that would work. But I just feel like that smoky blue just really makes my photos pop. So I've got some space over here. I've got some space up here. I also have this border area that I could play with. And one of the things that many of us will reach for when we want to add a little something is our tools. So the first tool that maybe I want to try using would be the Ancient Key Border Maker cartridge. I've gone ahead and just punched out a couple using the cartridge and the original border maker system. And it creates this fun sort of, again, Greek key, ancient key design. Now I could take that border and just, you know, add it on top of the pre-printed border. And Perhaps that's not the best color choice because the beige kind of disappears on the blue. It definitely would stand out a bit more against that nice deep blue background. So I could add it, you know, to the top and to the sides if I desired. And something like the beige might work a little bit better with the pages that we were looking at before. That would really make a nice little pop, a little nice addition to that page. And of course, we could also add it to the green. And that would be a nice contrast there. Lots of geometric shapes there. So that would be a really nice touch there. And again, if you watched the um, Fast to Fab episode a couple weeks ago, we talked about how just adding a border strip to some of these pages really makes a, a, a big difference. But you can see from that just how great that looks on its own. Now, the other thing that I might pull out is the new square tile decorative punch. And you can see that this is a square, but it's not the same as our square punch. But they do layer very nicely. So I actually just have uh, a square punched out here. And here's an example of the, the little square tile punch. So I might just add that on and maybe that's going to just become a little page embellishment. So again, keeping my basic layout on the Fast to Fab inspired papers, but just adding a touch of something else makes it really, really fun. So those of you who love to use your tools, you can still have fun with your tools, even though you're using the papers. Okay. So because I don't want to necessarily use any of my tools, but I think I want to bring a little bit of green into the mix here. I'm going to rely on some of my map cards and the stickers and even some of those laser cut borders to add some green in instead of mixing and matching my pages. I did, however, go ahead and trim a couple of pieces. They are just two inch strips, same size as this border. And you can see that they actually are a very similar pattern to the paper that's used in this border. And I'm thinking that I'm just going to add these borders so that they can, I'm not sure if I'll make it go all the way over across the page like that, or just stop it here at this border. But just adding that little bit of green going across and then a little bit of green on this page will bring in and can really connect everything. So now let's have a look here. I've got a couple of different greens that I already sort of saw in my map pack. I could go ahead and incorporate the green heart somewhere. Of course, hubby and I off on a little vacation adventure in the mountains. The heart would be a nice way to journal. But I don't have really enough space there. So I could go ahead and cut out that heart, maybe leave a little bit of the green in the background. 
Or I could just go ahead and trim one of these cards down to size and add it there. I also like the idea of just tucking that underneath there so that I still see a little bit of the green border or the green strip that I'm going to, to leave. So one of those two will work nicely. And I think the other one was a green oval. So that would bring a nice little bit of um, kind of roundness to this layout. We've got a couple of little, you know, circle elements, but everything else is very geometrical and straight. So maybe trimming out the oval with one of my custom cutting system templates and blades might work really well. It might be nice if I had a smaller oval, but I don't think there is anything else with the green tones that I was looking at. Okay, so I'm probably gonna do one of those three. Let's have a look at what else we can bring in. So I have used a few of these stickers, a couple that are gone, but as I look at some of the uh, titles, again, a lot of the titles are related to self-care, to spa days, etc. So not all of them are going to, to work um, perfectly. But the one that I did look at that might work nicely is take time to soak in the beautiful moments. And that appealed to me for a couple of reasons. It, it captures the idea here without being too much about the idea of self-care or spa. And if I use the oval title, then it would be nice to repeat that oval in my journaling box. So I think that that would work well. The other thing I could do is that I could um, cut another oval, maybe from a different, slightly different green or slightly different blue to mount that on and again, repeat the oval. So I think that that will work quite nicely for a title. And then I've got lots of little hearts in here. I noticed that there's a whole bunch of hearts here. And then maybe some of these little circle elements. For example, I could replace some of the little blue circles with green circles. And again, just bring that green color in a little bit more. And then finally, let's look at borders. So I did notice that there's these two beautiful um, kind of plant or vine borders. And I think that those would be very nice to go across the borders, the blue pre-printed borders on both pages. So that's what I'm kind of leaning towards. I did see a nice blue and green, blue on one side, green on the other side. This is a very geometric border and the green is perfect. And I think that would have been really nice, but sadly I don't have two of them. So for what I would want to do, uh, I would want to have two of them. I did not purchase two of the laser cut um, borders, so that's a good tip. <laughs> if you love the laser cut borders, always get two of them so that you can use them on both sides of a two page spread. So now I think I'm, I've got my plan. Let's go ahead and attach some of these. I'm just gonna push this up just a touch. And I'd like to attach these with some foam squares. So I'm just pulling those out and then I can go ahead and add it right onto my border strip here. Do the same on the other side. I love how one is going, growing sideways and one is growing up. So that looks good. And then now that I've got that green there, I think that really makes me determine that I do want to just trim off the edges um, and not make my strip of green paper go all the way, um, you know, to the edge of the page. So let's just go ahead and get these adhered. That should work well. I can trim that off later. Let's do this one too. And then I can get my photos adhered. And then we're pretty much finished except for my journaling, I think. And that's all my photos down. Okay, so that's pretty much my layout. Let's go ahead and just trim off this excess here. You could also, of course, pull out your 12 inch trimmer. I'll hang on to that because you never know if I can use it somewhere else. Okay, so now that we've got those trimmed off, 
really like the way that that's come together and again in very very uh, short amount of time so I've got that that I want to put over here maybe with a little bit of a background and I also want to trim out this oval so let me get my oval custom cutting system patterns and blades I just usually keep mine together on a little D ring or binder clip sort of ring. And then I actually have these just hanging uh, off the side of my work table. So they're pretty easy to grab when I need. But let's use the template here to see which of our ovals will work best to cut this out. I think it's going to be this one. And if I use, there it is. If I use this one with the red blade, I'm going to get that nice bit of green still around my, uh, my, my mat there, my, my journal box. So I'm just going to center that as best I can. Grab my red blade. Let's go ahead and cut this. I like to put my pegs from the blade into the track before I put it down. Then I know that they're in there nice and solid. And then we should be able to just trim that right out. Oh, I like the way that looks. Yeah, that's going to be great. So that's going to be my oval journal box and maybe it's going to overlap like this or maybe I'm going to just tuck it under um, the edge of my photo. I don't know that I have a lot to say here. Let's see how that looks. It kind of picks up the green. I could overlap it but I don't want to necessarily um, you know eliminate a lot of the scenery. So I think that that might work the best. And then I actually want maybe a blue background for this oval. So I did find that there was a kind of a light blue card in my variety map pack. Uh, this one, of course, is a, the back side is another oval, but I'm going to use this side uh, to create a little bit of an oval mat there. So let's have a look again with our templates. And I think that this one is going to work right just just the right size. So that's the actually the next biggest one. There we go. We're going to use the inside. Now this looks like it's pretty much the same size as the blue blade. So I'm going to again use the inside track with the red blade and that will give me a nice little mat. So let's put that down and make another little oval using this. I'm just going to cut it off the top edge so I still can use this for something else. Pegs in the track and then let's go ahead and cut out my little mat for my title. Again, kind of bringing in more of the blue and I can just put the title right on that little mat. Just stick it because it's a sticker. And then I think this is all going to come together quite nicely. But as I put this down here, this title, which I had sort of thought would work really well, I see that I've got, you know, a photo here with a lot of words. So maybe I don't want to have my title right next to it. Let's just try swapping these two around. Perhaps I could add in my title there and then turn my journal box sideways. And that actually works a little bit better because now I've got kind of that words on each side and I've got still some room for some nice embellishments. So let's have a look here. I've got some of those great sort of vines that would be repeating the vines in my uh, the vines from my borders something like that and that really brings the eye back to those um, those vines and then I've even got it as I said the little hearts I think will be the other thing so let's add some of these little dots first where are my foam squares there we go and I thought that I'd just start by 
putting these little circles over top of the blue circles that I covered up with the green um, strips. And that way sort of has a bit of, you know, intentionality. It doesn't look like I've just covered up something. There we go. So it kind of extends that. So I like that. And then again, I've got some, I've got one more of those, but I've got lots of these little hearts. So I think that the hearts are just going to kind of make their appearance. And then I've got a little green heart that I think I'll probably just add over here. Just again, to kind of connect those two. I'm just gonna add this in here, just kind of overlapping both photos. And I just use the regular tape runner adhesive for that so that it's easy to write on, okay? So I think that is really it. Again, I spent some extra time adding the strips of green paper the extra sort of border stickers, but you saw before we added those, this would have been a, a five minute layout to do. Just by choosing the direction that I wanted my Fast to Fab inspired papers to be oriented in and then arranging my photos. So Fast to Fab for the win yet again. So that's it for me today. I hope that between the session we did today with the Fast to Fab inspired papers, and the session we did a couple of weeks ago with the fresh focus on Fast to Fab refill pages. I hope that's really convinced you to give them a try. I know that there's a lot of you out there who love them and who are total converts, Fast to Fab converts, but if you haven't tried them, I hope that, you know, maybe the Fast to Fab inspired papers are a spot for you to dip your toe into it because it doesn't feel like you have to make an entire album with Fast to Fab you can just make uh, one or two layouts using those papers and then mix them into your other albums just like you would a regular layout. So I think it's a great jumping in point, but no matter if you try the papers or the pages, again, just like the name says, they are fast, they are fabulous, okay? All right, so next week, next Wednesday, we're gonna be playing with a new collection and I can't tell you much about it. I can't give you a, you know, a checklist of supplies or anything because it hasn't launched yet. It, advisors are going to see the preview on Friday and it's going to launch next Monday. So when we get together next Wednesday, the collection will only be a couple of days old and we'll be able to play with it. But I will tell you this, we're going to become laser focused. So take from that what you will and I will see you next Wednesday to uh, to play around with a new collection. Until then, have a great week and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.